And welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of... This is Jair Lynch. Jair was a member of the 1992 Olympic team and the 1996 Olympic team. He is a gymnast who name you probably have never heard of. Did you realize in between that cycle of 92 till about 2000, Team USA on the men's side was so bad But they won two Olympic medals. One was a gold medal on high bar by Trent Demas. And the other one was by this young man, Jair Lynch, on parallel bars. He won a silver medal in 1996. Now, you guys may not know this young gentleman's name. USA Gymnastics have kind of pushed his accomplishments to the side um, for somebody who they valued a lot more named John Roethlisberger. Now, John Roethlisberger is one of my favorite gymnasts to watch. I love his commentating skills. But in that quad, our friend John did little to nothing for USA Jonas. Giving credit to somebody where credit is due, John Roethlisberger was the three-time national champion in between 93 and 96. John Roethlisberger helped spearhead spearhead Team USA to several sixth-place finishes at world championships. But John Roethlisberger, and he was a lot of American Cup champions. Like, he won a lot of American Cup champions. But when you saw John Roethlisberger across the seas and those international judges got a hand to his scoring system, John Roethlisberger never scored, never scored where he scored nationally. Now, Jair fell a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And some people could make an argument that because he was very inconsistent, Team USA just did not, you know, feel like he was worth their time and effort into putting so much time and energy behind this young man. But he literally was a two-time Olympian. Like, they should have invested as much time and energy as they did a John Roethlisberger, a Blaine Wilson, of any of those kids during this era. Hell, even Cheney Humphrey, who was also African-American, who they sent to a lot of things, who did a bunch of nothing. Jair actually went to the Olympics with this bar routine and won a silver medal. And during that time for Team USA on the men's side, that was such a big accomplishment. I'm just surprised that they never um, named a building after him or something. Like, the men sucked. The, if you think USA Gymnastics on the men's side is bad now, they were really bad in the 90s. So for what Jair to do... And back then, everybody was dismounting with a double pipe. I think this dismount is named after him, actually, the double front with a half. He's the absolutely the very first gymnast I've ever seen do it. So, Jair, Jair Lynch, a name that you all should remember in gymnastics history. Another name that should be remembered in gymnastics history is Cheney Umphreys. Cheney Umphreys never won no world or Olympic individual medals or no team medals for Team USA. But he was the very first African-American male gymnast, not biracial like Jair, but African-American that I saw go to world championships and make event finals. Did he win medals in these event finals? No. But you could always count on Cheney to make a Reigns Finals 
and you can always count on Chaney to make a high bars finals. And every so often, he will find himself in a floor exercise finals. And for back then, for how bad Team USA was as a team, those was accomplishments in and of itself. It was like in the 80s when Team USA would just make event finals. And that means you was the best gymnast in the world. I mean, in America, just because you made an event final. Well, that's how I view Cheney Humphreys. Now, ump freeze, not hunt freeze, ump freeze. Um, and for those things, I think his name should always be remembered in gymnastics history. One of the first good black gymnasts for America, Cheney Humphreys. And then after 96, USA Gymnastics on the men's side was as white as snow. It was pure white. There was a little sprinkling of color, like Raj Barzar, who everybody does his release skill on parallel bars. But none of these gymnasts were black. Um, it wasn't until 2011 where I saw one of us again. But he even he didn't think he was one of us back then. Now, John Orozco, you know, you know I love you. You know, you are, are one of my favorite male gymnasts of all times. But John Orozco on my show loves gymnastics. Me, Oscar, and special guest Gemlandia was re-watching or re-listening to a podcast you did with Gemcastics, right? And you made a very slick comment about Gabrielle Douglas. Now, I don't know how, I mean, I got to include you in the list. You are black. You have lots of accomplishments for USA Gymnastics. But friend, I have to start off this conversation by reading you. So I'm going to start off this conversation by reading you. Then I'm going to get to your accomplishments. I hope you understand that me and you are cool. I love you. I will support everything that you do. But how dare your ass talk about Gabrielle Douglas, you, you, I can't even do it. I'm so sorry, John Orozco. Jim Landia, read his nigga for filth for me. I can't do it. He know he's my friend. But friend, why would you say that about Gabby? Why? Like, what did Gabby do to you? Oh, you said that Gabby outed you, right? Now, if Gabby did out you, then you would have a reason to dislike her and I need to mind my own fucking business. And if that's what happened... I'm going to shut up because when Gabby was younger, she used to make a lot of mistakes. I'm not even going to lie. I, I, I had to clean up a lot of... She's better now. She's better with these interviews. The same, but man, when she was younger, she used to make a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. <laughs> but, but John Orozco, you just did a whole interview. That whole interview was about racism in the male side of gymnastics. And then you sat up there and justified the racism towards Gabrielle Douglas. That's the shit that I don't like. And friend, you owe that girl an apology. And you owe me an apology for making me even have to do this to you, girl. I love you, John Orozco. But that was fucked up. That was F-U-C-K-U-P. And you know it, friend. With all of that being said, John Orozco, we still like you over here. And you had one of the greatest moments in male USA Gymnastics history. And we're going to play it right now. Yeah, you know, it's it's not his best event. John has to be, I think he's got to be a little bit better than perfect. But he will not concede anything. No question about that. Beautiful flare work. Once again, this is how he's, he's dealt with that injury to the Achilles tendon. He adds a lot of bonus points by doing that flare work on the floor. 15.45 could take the national championship. Day one, 15.05. Oh, Felix, like right. a sure thing. Uh, it's not, not a sure thing, but he has not had a landing deduction yet in this exercise. He scored 15.05, day one. And he had a little bit of jumping everywhere. Today, just that run hop. It's going to be close, but I don't 
know, I don't think that he can get that 15 4 5, but it, he sure gave it a run, I'll tell you that. And the team that will represent the United States starts to come into focus, but something else is crystal clear. John Roscoe has won the national championship by .05. Unbelievable. I don't think he knows. Wow. No, he knows. Oh, he knows that. <laughs> wow. And the United States has a chance to walk into the arena in London with three national champions next month. Wow. His execution score was a 9.4. And that is unheard of. Steve Penny, the head of USA Gymnastics, congratulates him. Look at this. I won. I won the U.S. National Championship. Did y'all see how Tim Daggett was doubting him? How USA Gymnastics was doubting him? Let me tell y'all something, how in 2012, John Orozco stood on business so hard. John Orozco had Jonathan Horton. Jonathan, I mean, John Orozco also had Sam McCoolett, Jake Doughton. And even though Danielle Leva is a white passing Cuban American, they treat that man like he's black. They treat that man like he is uh, N word. So I'm really thinking, I'm still editing the video as we're doing it now, if I should add him to the list because he is a man of color, even though his skin complexion is white. But USA Gymnastics has done that man so dirty. And Danielle Leva, I know this is about John Orozco, but Danielle Leva, I'm finna, yeah, I'm adding him to the list. He's the next person. We're going to talk about Danielle Leva next. But John Orozco have had so many accomplishments in his gymnastics career. I mean, and then in 2012, going back to this 2012, this moment right here, all he needed was a 15-4-5. A, a, a he scored a 15-1. Tim Daggett was acting like this was an, an, an uh, and possible score for him to gather. And when he gathered Tim Daggett and Brett, oh, this was one of the best gymnastics moments of my life. And he did it to Tim Daggett again, again. In 2011, John Orozco was on the world team and he won a bronze medal with the team. In 2013, he was the bronze medalist on, on, on parallel bars. I was about to say uneven bars, child, on parallel bars. And in 2014, he won a bronze medal with the team again. So with John Orozco and Danelle Lavo at the helm, Team USA was winning medals. He also was the gold medalist at the Pacific Rim and all around. He was a gold medalist at the pack room with the team. He was the gold medalist on high bar. He was the gold medalist on parallel bars. He was the silver medalist on floor and the silver medalist on rings in 2014. So in 2014, that was the year of John Orozco clearing them kids. But do y'all ever hear about him? Is he one of the NBC broadcasters? Is he one of the people that NBC... Um, talks about and have on the posters. This man literally has won so many titles. And if he was white, I hate to say it, he would be one of the poster children of USA Gymnastics, but he's not. He was one of the greatest USA male gymnasts ever of all time. The only two people, three people that's probably better than him on the Olympic level is Paul Ham, clearly, Danelle Leva. And one of them old 80s gymnasts. But after all of them, it's him. He's probably the fourth or fifth best gymnast of all time on USA Gymnastics. Chris Brooks, Danelle Leva, and John Orozco, you talked about, Tim, in your theory that they are all competing for the same spot. If you combine their scores on pommel horse, Chris Brooks is a 14, Danelle Leva is an average 14.141, and John Orozco is just behind him at 14.425, so advantage Leva. Now let's go to parallel bars, 15.55 to 15.35 to 15.183, advantage Chris Brooks. Now let's go to the high bar, and it's 15. 
15.541 to 15.041 to 15.375 advantage Chris Brooks, which means... As far as that's been put together, he takes two out of the three. What do you think about that, Nasia? Well, I definitely think he came out here and he did an amazing job. And Sam McCoy, Alex Nador, and John Orozco! An injury in between that moment and the start of the Rio Olympics kept him off the Olympic team, but that man made the Olympic team, John Orozco. Now, Danelle Leva is not a black man. He's not, but he is a Cuban-American, and I'm from Miami, so represent to my Latino brothers and sisters, even though they rarely represent for us. But for him, I don't know what it is. He is very white passing. I mean... His name is Danelle. They could easily just call him Dan and nobody would ever know. But I don't know. USA Gymnastics do not mess with Danelle Leva at all. Even though in recent history, Danelle Leva has been the greatest American male gymnast we've produced. He should be on the forefront of everything, USA Men's Gymnastics. He should be... You know how they're trying to make John Rocklisberger the male commentator? It should be Danelle Leva. He literally was the 2012 bronze medalist in the all-around. And he went to 2016 replacing John Roethlisberger, John Roethlisberger, Lord, John Orozco. And he went to that Olympic Games and won, I think, the silver on parallel bars and the silver on high bar. Daddy stood on business. And for USA Gymnastics to treat this man like he just doesn't exist is just a travesty. Danelle Leva. Hey, what's up, you guys? Let me say this. This video started as a totally and completely different idea and turned into this. <clears throat> I want to conclude the video off right here by saying the next two people on the name was clearly going to be Fred Richards and Koi Young, right? And I want to say this to both of these young men. The point of this video started off as the great white hope But then it turned into, you know, just talking about the history of African-Americans and men of color in USA Gymnastics, right? So I want to say to both Fred and Koi, but especially to Koi, because it seems like USA Gymnastics done hung their hat on Fred Richards as their top all-arounder, right? That's cool. Koi, be mindful of Brody Malone. Brody Malone is currently the great white hope. In USA Men's Gymnastics, he is the man who they want to hang their hat on. He is the man who they want to parade around to all the talk shows and all this and that as the champion of USA Gymnastics. They accept Fred, but USA Gymnastics, they're going to try to bump you off the team. It's not going to be Asher. It's not going to be Paul. It's definitely not going to be Fred. It's going to be you. So, Koi, I know you just went to a World Cup and you basically failed a bunch of times. And now you back at Stanford preparing for your NCAA um, postseason or whatever. Koi, it's going to be very crucial to you to not fuck up this season. Like, I think they might still take Fred, even if Fred have errors. But you, Koi, nah, they're going to, they're gonna, even though you went to Worlds, and you are the current world silver medalist on both Palmer Horse and Vault. Two events that Team USA have never seen medals on. I'm not sure if they ever seen. I'm um, Steven Araja was the world champion. But I'm just saying, like, it's going to be you, Koi. They're going to try to bump you off the team for Fred because Fred has the bigger name in the sport right now. Koi, you're going to have to stand on business, sir. You seen what John Orozco did? You seen that? That video is for you, even though we, I like you, John Orozco, but st- that's not what we're talking about, Michaela. Let's stay stay on focus. Koi, you need to stand on business the same way John Orozco did. Fred, you do too. Now, Fred, don't think you for the fall and they just for to put you on the Olympic team. Look at what they did to Janelle Wittenberg. Like in 19, 2016, Janelle Wittenberg was the vault 
bronze medalist in the world or whatever, and they still left him off the team the next year. So, Fred, don't you think you could be Danelle Wheatenberg either? I need y'all both to stand on business this season. Stand, stand, stand. Fred, you are still... Fred, you are standing on business this season, but Koi, brother, don't let this social media shit get to your head, girl. Don't let these these world medals get to your head, girl, and you'll never see another Olympic team. You better ask Danelle Wiedenberg what that's like, going to world, winning world medals, and then never seeing the Olympic Games. You better ask Danelle Wiedenberg what that's like. I don't want that for you, Koi. I don't want that for you. You cannot be going. If you're not prepared, don't let USA Gymnastics just sing you places. If you're not ready, if your focus is on college, don't focus on elite until after college is done, baby, because you can't do that. They're already making Brody like the second coming of Jesus Christ with this. With Girl. Boy, you're going to have to stand on business, baby. Especially on Vaughn and Palmer Horse, like you can't be falling on those two events, especially because I think it's a place for both you and Brody on the team. If Fred stand on business, if Asher stand on business, and if you all stand on business, they could be the three all arounders with Koi. You could do Palmer Horse, Vault, and Flora. Brody could do rings, parallel bars, and high bars, and I think that would be a very competitive team for USA. I love you guys. Well, I'm doing it with my bad hand. I love you guys, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Ah! Michaela loves gymnastics.